Thanks for joining us today. My name is Autumn Sullivan. I'm the Marketing Manager at Mobilization Funding. With me, as always, is Scott Pieper, the CEO of Mobilization Funding. Scott, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, Autumn. How you doing? I'm great. How are you doing today? It's been great. So far, so good. I really can't complain. That's awesome. I wanted to talk to you today about how subcontractors can choose a financial partner. We all know that managing cash flow can be really tricky um, for every business, but it's especially difficult in construction because of the um, complex and, let's be honest, kind of inefficient payment system that they have to work within. Subcontractors have to wait up to 90 days sometimes to get paid after they start work on a job. So it makes sense that they need a finance partner. But how do they choose the right one for their business and for that project? And before we even get into all that, I wanted to have you talk about what some of the finance options are. So could you run through some of the most common finance options subcontractors might be choosing from? Yeah, no problem. You have to start with which ones are out there first. Um, what choices a particular subcontractor in construction might have could be limited, namely because of either no fault of their own, either banks, for example. Some banks just won't work with construction companies, big or small. Some banks will only work with certain size companies, regardless of construction. So in general, I mean, big picture wise, you have your traditional lenders, which are your traditional banks, pretty much like a bank line of credit. You would have factoring companies where you could sell your receivables to bring in cash flow or create cash flow from the current invoices. The best part there is pretty much you're shortening the gap between when you actually invoice and when you're actually paid. So that's a good option if you have an extended payment term or customers that pay you 60 days, 90 days or longer. And then you also have um, other types of alternative lending. Could be ABL lines, asset back lines. That's a more of a traditional bank type, but also alternatives, kind of a blend. Essentially the credit worthiness of your customers combined with your credit worthiness, combined with the amount of invoices that you have outstanding or your accounts receivable at any time. And they sort of create a hybrid credit line off of that. And then you also have alternative sources like merchant cash advances, which are really based off of just the deposits going into your bank statements and not much else, uh, or your, and that and your personal credit. So those are the different types of working capital lines. You also, from a loan perspective, you have SBA loans or you just have bank loans on the business. And I look at those as a little bit different. Those are more loans to capitalize your business. And what I mean by that is it gives you a big chunk or slug of capital, like bringing in an equity partner would, that helps you just have some working capital. You can deploy it, make some investments to help generate revenue, et cetera. Most construction companies though, what they're looking for is more access to capital to help it drive through projects. They need really working capital. So in our experience, we really see more of like traditional bank lines of credit, merchant cash advance loans, our company mobilization loans where they're looking for project specific funding or construction factoring. Thanks Scott. So now that folks know what options are out there, can you tell us your recommendations for choosing a partner, whether it's a factoring company or us or a bank, preferably not an MCA. Um, I'll put that video at the end of this video so you can see why. What should contractors be looking for? What should they be looking out for? What should they be thinking about when they're vetting a new finance partner? That's a good question. You know, I, I think any company, construction is no different. You need to think about what is the problem that you're trying to solve for before you really think about, let me go get some money. Because getting money is comes with a burden and it comes with a different type of responsibility. And it also comes with a different type of risk that you might already be experiencing. You know, risk of not finishing your job, risk of losing a customer, risk of, you know, damaging your business or things like that is one thing. But taking on money from an institution, a bank, a private lender, or a company has a different set of risk. And so you really want to know what type of problem you're solving for first, because you don't know what problem you're trying to fix. It's going to be really hard for you to get the right type of loan or know you're getting the right type of loan and find out which structure you want. So for example, if you are a company that um, is just getting started and you're trying to figure out how you're going to hire some employees, buy some equipment that you need, pay some general overhead, get insurance and get started. Those are capitalization loans. You need money to really capitalize your business, to get it started, get some working capital going until you can start to generate revenue. If you're a company that's generating revenue already, 
but you just are either growing too fast or you don't have enough cash in your business, then really one of two things could be happening. You could be growing fast and therefore you don't have enough cash working capital in your business to help move to the next job. So you're just a little bit tight. You could be just not bidding your job correctly. You think you have a certain amount of profit or margin in the job, but the reality is you just don't. And no loan is going to fix that problem. So you really want to look at where your pain points are, what the problems are, where you feel the, um, the stress coming from, and really do a deep dive. So let's just, let's just assume that it's working capital. You need working capital. You started off your business and you're doing job to job and you're doing great and you're finishing them. And you know, just, it's just taking time to collect because of the normal inefficiencies of payments, cash flow, and a construction project or just a construction business in general. Then that's great. There's ways to solve for that. What you really want to look at is if you have a huge amount of receivables outstanding, and I'm not talking about retainage, for example, let's exclude retainage from this conversation because retainage is retainage. That's money you're going to get when the job's finished, you've done all your work, you invoice it and the project's over with. That's money that you can get later. You really can't finance retainage. It's hard to find a bank or an alternative lender or a factoring company, anyone to really do, deal with retainage for mostly all the obvious reasons. You just never know when it's going to get paid. and it's, it's a long play away usually um, in terms of time. That leaves you with just your normal invoicing, which is great. And if you have an extended amount of invoicing and you just need to get access to that invoicing quicker, well then looking at construction factoring or just factoring in general, but finding a good factoring company that understands construction and can work with you on construction projects is important. And then you basically can sell your receivables to bring some of that money into the business now and you do that at a cost, a financing cost for a fee. And that brings in some working capital, allows you to take the money into the next job, pay the bills that you had or costs you had associated to those invoices, and then move on to the next one. In the case of mobilization funding, if you're growing fast, you do have some outstanding receivables, but the receivables that you're owed are really tied to costs that you still need to pay on that project, but yet you have all this new work or you have the ability to get all this new work and you don't have any extra working capital in the business from the previous jobs, you're just growing too fast or the opportunities are there, and you need money upfront specifically for a project to really get you started and go for the job. And until the job starts paying you, you can then get to a point where you're cash flowing the job itself. That's where a mobilization funding loan from us would come in perfectly. You know, we provide the money up front at the beginning of the job before invoicing. So that's the big difference between us and factoring. Factoring, you've already done the work and invoiced it, and now you can sell it, and they can give you money for that invoice. Or if you need money up front and you want to keep your projects all structured together, you can borrow money from us up front, use it to get the project started so you can wait for your invoices from the other jobs, but yet still start your new projects and you don't need the cash for it. That's really the major difference between mobilization funding loan and factoring. The other alternative is a merchant cash advance. And we've done whole videos on merchant cash advance. And, and frankly, merchant cash advances, in my opinion, are very bad for construction companies. Here's why. In a merchant cash advance, you can just submit your bank statements. They look at your deposits. And let's just say your average deposits are $200,000 a month or $50,000 a month. It doesn't really matter. For easy sake, let's just say, let's pick a number in the middle and let's just say it's $100,000 a month. Well, if you're a construction company getting deposited $100,000 a month, that is your revenue. However, we all know that when you have $100,000 a month being deposited into a construction company, at least 50% of that money is owed to sub suppliers and vendors for that specific job which means that as soon as you collect that $100,000, 50,000 of it should be going directly out to pay your vendors and suppliers that are associated to that project. Now, whether or not that happens in a normal environment or not is a totally different story. But the fact remains is the owner on that project or the general contractor that's paying you is fully in expecting, anticipating that when you receive that money, you're gonna pay the subs and suppliers and vendors that are associated to it. So why is that important? Well, if you have $100,000 deposited in your account every month, but really only 50,000 of it is your business's true revenue, the way the merchant cash advances work is they just look at what your deposits are and then they give you usually a chunk of money that's equivalent to the average amount of deposits that go into your account per month, which is great at first. But then the problem is you now are starting to pay that money back on a daily or weekly basis. And if you don't get paid 
for a whole nother month on that job or your other jobs, you're now borrowing money and paying it back with the same money the very next day. It's also very expensive, but more importantly, besides the expense, it's really the cash flow of the way that that loan needs to be repaid. If you're in a cash flow problem to begin with, finding the right lender is important. If you find a lender that's going to give you money up front, that's great for a couple of days or a week. But if you have to start paying that back immediately on a daily or weekly basis, well, all you're doing is making your cash flow problem even worse, particularly if you borrow that money at 30 or 40% fee. So those are the major differences between the, what, what type of loans and why you should look at one versus the other. But those are the things you should be contemplating when you're looking at why, what kind of loan you should borrow, when you should borrow it, and what type of lender you should work with. I think that's a great point to know what you're borrowing the money for before you start investigating what your options are. I'm curious about your thoughts on whether or not they should look for companies that have construction experience or expertise or specialize in construction, or if that's, you know, is that necessary? Um, or is it just a, a nice to have? What's your opinion on that? It's a good question. Um, and, you know, for the folks that are watching the video, they, they know right now the pain that it is. Every time you pick up the phone and try to explain con your construction business and explain the cash flow of your construction business to a lender, it's usually pretty painful. Um, most people, one, can't believe it. They don't understand it. If they do, they more look and think that our customers, construction companies, have something wrong with them versus thinking that it's really a construction problem. But the way that you're paid in the construction world is so abnormal to other industries and businesses that it puts a lot of pain and constraint on there. And so it's really hard. You, you want to work with a lender that understands the way cash is moved around a construction company and even to the construction company from a job site, because it just makes that relationship that much harder if one side, particularly the side that's lending the money, has no understanding of it. And if, it, if they do approve the loan, that's great. However, what's going to happen is as they start to service the loan or as they start to work with the company, mm -hmm. they're going to have so many questions and stuff they didn't figure out on the front end, they're going to figure out while the loan's being administered. And it's going to be problematic for our clients, the construction companies, because if they don't understand construction, they're going to find themselves in a situation where they're continuously trying to explain away something that's very normal in construction as a problem that the lender might see. And it's going to make it hard for them. So yes, the short answer is they should definitely work with a lender who understands construction and even more so understands their particular trade or their role or type of construction that they do. Thanks, Scott. Autumn, there's one key takeaway I think everyone should come away with from this video. And it's really quite simple. If you have a cash flow problem and you need money, not all money is the same. That's the number one thing to understand. Money is money. Yes, of course, it spends the same. However, the money that you're borrowing the way you pay it back, when you're given the money, what you have to use it for, the other the qualities and covenants that are around that loan are all important to a construction company. And so therefore you, you have to make sure that you understand what problem you're trying to solve for in your business that's causing you stress so that you have the right lender. So when, and that sounds simple, but in order to do that, you have to find a company that understands construction, that can listen to what your problem is and help you solve for it but do it in a way where they can give you the money that you need when you need it so you can solve for your problem immediately, but also pay it back in a way that's not going to hurt your business or create another problem or exacerbate the current problem. That is the main takeaway of this video. And so really thinking through what is that problem and find the right lender. And we can of course help you do both. That's a great point. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I recommend that you subscribe to our channel because we're adding new videos all the time. If you'd like more information about mobilization funding, you can find us at mobilizationfunding.com. You can also give us a call and a real person will answer. It's 866-44-APPLY, which is in numbers only, 866-442-7759. I hope you all have a great day. Thanks. Bye, Scott. Bye, Autumn. Thank you.